Do you have a strict budget for a subcompact car? However, your family is growing a little bit too fast. Maybe you could go for the Toyota Altis or the Honda Civic, but uh, getting those in automatic versions is a little bit too expensive. Well, why don't you try one of these? Here we have the 2021 GAC GA4 1.3 liter turbo. This is the top of line trim of the GA4. Today I'm gonna show you around this car and I'm also gonna give it a test drive, so stay tuned. From the outside, all I can say is that the GA4 is rather on the understated side. However, despite its price tag, you'll know immediately from the front that this is not a subcompact car despite its subcompact car price. For example, this uh, grill right here, it's just so big and chunky. It's even bigger than like the grills you get from an Altis or a Civic. In fact, this entire car is bigger than an Altis or a Civic. Now, as you can see down here in the badge, there is a camera because this car has a top-down view, which I shall show you inside later on. Then this top of the line trim also gets this uh, LED DRLs. You also get fog lights, and this car even comes with cornering lamps, which is really nice for its price range. While the front of the GA4 is undoubtedly understated and very conservative looking, on the side, it's a little bit of both. So you get some lines, which are rather tame and more reminiscent of the Toyota Corolla. However, as you look at this roof line, which is slightly sloping, and this rear quarter panel right here, it's going a little bit more towards the sporty Honda Civic route. Now, this top of the line trim also comes with these really nice looking 17-inch uh, rims in 205-50-17s. Remember that camera and the grill? Well, there's another camera over here and another one at the other side and another one at the back because, again, this car has the 360-degree view top-down camera, which I'll show you later, and it's quite cool. The back of the GA4 reminds me a little bit of the Hyundai Reina with a rather bland looking design in the middle, but at least they did put in some effort to make it a little bit sportier. So this uh, crease on the trunk that's built in kind of uh, acts like a ducktail spoiler, at least aesthetic wise. Then your lamps too, they're pretty much like the Mazda wrap around lights, which I really love. Now to open this trunk up, you just press this really nice hidden button right here by the light and it opens up like that. And under this, you have an extremely big trunk. Talking about like bigger than an Altis, bigger than a Civic, probably bigger even than a Camry. And again, this car is only size the same as a Camry, but price the same, more like a V also. It's just really nice to have a trunk this big. Under this, you have a donut spare tire, which comes in handy. It's a lot better than a lot of sealants you get. And you can also fold the seats down 60, 40 in this car. Under the hood of the GAC GA4, you have this 1.3 liter turbocharged inline four engine, which makes 136 horsepower and 202 newton meters of torque. This is mated to a six speed automatic transmission, which is actually quite smooth. It's a rather brisk and enjoyable engine, which you shall see in the drive later on. One cool thing I found with this car, which I only usually find in expensive Euro cars, is that if you hold the unlock button, the driver's side window as well as the sunroof opens up. In most Euro cars, all the windows open, but for this one, it's just the driver's side window. Then to close it, you just do the reverse. So you lock the car first and then you hold the lock button and everything just closes back up. This is perfect for your like, uh, Hot summer days and you just want to cool your car before entering the car. Here's the GAC GA4. First, let's check the foot of the door. Sounds like it's Japanese competitors. Let's start the car up. Press right up like that. You get push button start for this top of the line trim. I'd say that the cabin is very solid. You do get a bunch of like leather appointments up top here. You're on the side as well. And your steering wheel, that's also leather. However, there are still some parts which are kind of hard touch plastic. So up here, that's hard touch here too and here in the center despite it looking like it's leather it's not it's still just plastic now going back to your steering wheel it's nice and chunky it's multi-function as well so you get audio controls on the left side and cruise control settings on the right side for intimate cluster it's just very basic it looks a little bit dated but it's fine overall you get a screen in the middle as well which shows you like your tpms your battery voltage and even general trip computers in the center you get this uh touch screen that it's not exactly the most responsive. However, what I like about it is that if you put the car into reverse, right? So you get your reverse camera as usual. You also get a front camera, but you also get like this uh, 360 degree top down view of the car. It does an amazing job of stitching the image together to give it a very natural feel. 
something you can easily rely on when you're parking. Up top, you get a nice, decent sized sunroof. Here you get another uh, place to put a lot of items and uh, it's rather deep and large too. In terms of cubbies, there's a lot so you can place your phone over here, over here as well, cup holders and big bottle holder to the side. For your seats, they're very firm. It's a six-way power adjustable driver's seat, but unfortunately only manually adjustable for the passenger seat, but mm, that's really fine for this price range. In terms of some other extra features in this car, you do get the dual front airbags as well as dual side airbags. You also get power folding mirrors for this trim, and you also get a uh, electronic parking brake, which personally I'm not a big fan of, but I guess that, that is the feature, of course. You also get an auto hold function for when you're stopped at a traffic stop. The back of the GAC G4s, check the door thud. Decent door thud. I also love how the doors are like nice and short. So getting out in like tighter parking lots is rather easy with this car. So back here, leg room is absolutely amazing. There's so much leg room. There's a map pocket right here. That, that could be a little bit tight. However, it makes up for it by giving you like two of these smaller pockets for you to put like your wallet or your phone. Love these with Chinese cars. Now, the seats themselves are also as firm as the front. And what I love about them is that they give you a lot of thigh support unlike its Japanese counterpart. So if you're in longer journeys, you're not gonna feel sore with this car. It's really great for longer journeys. For your toys, you only get your own uh, armrest over here, two cup holders, they're rather large though. You get a five volt outlet, two air vents, and a place to put some stuff down here. Now, if you wanna carry three people in this car at the back, no problem at all. The transmission tunnel is incredibly low. It's not exactly flat, but it is pretty low, and feet space is not bad as well. The car is also really, really wide, and headroom is amazing. So this is one of those uh, compact cars that you can really carry five people, no problem at all. Driving the 2021 GAC GA4. First thing as you drive this is that you'll feel much at home if you're coming from a Toyota Altis. The comfort level, it's really good. It's really uh, soft. But also, if you do want to drive this a little bit faster, you're going to be pleasantly surprised that it corners even better than a Honda Civic, which is mind-boggling. However, it's still not as good and direct feeling as a Mazda 3 because after all, Mazda makes one of the best steering systems next to BMW. Now the steering, going back to that, you get three choices, right? So you get comfort, standard, and sport. Put it into like comfort mode and it's perfect for in-town city speeds. It's really light. You can like turn it even with like one or two fingers. Put it in standard and it feels a bit weird because it's not really too light nor too heavy or rather it's not light enough nor heavy enough. So it's kind of weird. I don't like standard. But the very moment you put it into like sport mode and you want to take this car over fast corners, it does it really, really well despite the electronic power assist. It feels like a mechanical power steering system, so it emulates it really well, which is really good and really rare for a car at this price point to be able to do that. The 1.3 liter engine in this car, it feels a lot smoother than its displacement. So if you're coming from like the uh, Toyota Altis before with like the 1.8 and the 2 liter engines, it feels much similar to that. Turbo lag is nowhere near as bad as what you get in the Honda Civic RS. There is still a little bit of lag. Uh, from one to 2,000 RPM, there is a noticeable lag. However, once you go past 2,000 RPM, it just, it just goes. And it's quite brisk, actually. I really did not expect this car to be that brisk. And if you like put this car into its like sport mode, then you manually shift. It's rather brisk going like 80 now holy crap okay it's, it's really fast this car will really not disappoint you when it comes to speed i know a lot of cars in this segment isn't exactly known for their speed aside from the honda civic rs which has like 170 plus horsepower but this one with its 136 i believe it's really not bad it's close to a honda civic plus the fact that you don't get all that uh hard turbo lag makes this a much more responsive and fun car to drive. Now, the very moment you're going a bit faster and you just turn it over these corners, the handling definitely wouldn't disappoint either. Dare I say that really, it does corner even better than the Civic, which is really impressive and it costs way less than a Civic. I don't know if I have enough roads to make 100, but we're just gonna do a slight acceleration test for this car. Do note though that it is raining quite hard today, so traction is a bit limited. Put it in the sport mode and just pretty much floor it. Okay, we're going at 40, 60, 80, and okay, that's 100. That's really not bad at all. You really wouldn't expect that much performance from my 1.3 liter engine. 
they really tuned this incredibly well. It's a, definitely a very, very brisk car, especially for a city car. If you want to drive this car on your typical city day for your commute to work, I have been driving this car for the past week to and from the home and the office. And despite these seats being rock hard, and you might think that it's not gonna be comfortable, turns out it's actually really comfortable. The firmness of these seats are really great for my back. Usually when I drive the Fortuna every day to work, after around an hour of heavy traffic or an hour and a half, I do get some sort of back pains, but for this one, I really don't get it at all. And the seats, they're more reminiscent of a Euro car seat. Now, I know a lot of people dream of having a Euro car or Mercedes-Benz or a BMW thinking that the seats in those cars are incredibly soft, but the thing is they're not. So if you haven't uh, driven one or rode in one, you're gonna be surprised that the seats in those cars are incredibly firm. And although they're not as firm as the seats you get here, they're pretty close. So it really does have that sort of Euro feel to it in this car compared to a more Japanese feel to it. It does feel a little bit more premium. Noise insulation in this car is simply better than its Japanese rivals. So if you're coming from like the Toyota Altis or the Honda Civic, and the very moment it rains, it does get quite loud inside the car, despite those cars usually not having a sunroof and having a full thick headliner. However, this car, despite having a rather decent sized sunroof, and even if I open this cover up here and it's raining quite hard right now, it actually is really quiet at the very moment you go above the speed limit. It's still rather quiet as well, not that you should do that. You do get a little bit of tire noise, but wind noise is not so present. So NVH overall in this car is really great. Parking this car is very easy. There's not really that long of an overhang at the back. You get front and reverse cameras in this car as well, plus the perfectly stitched top-down view of the camera. This is one of the easiest cars to park whether it be parallel or perpendicular. The average fuel economy I've been getting for this past week returns me around eight to eight and a half kilometers per liter. And do take note that this is from Quezon City, New Manila, all the way to BGC every day. So traffic on the way home can get really bad. I'm talking about like 14 kilometers in two hours. And yet this car still returns that great of a fuel economy. It's really not bad at all. Price just slightly higher than Toyota Vios, which by the way is a subcompact car. You can get this GAC GA4 in its compact form factor with the comforts of an Altis, just a little bit less power than a Civic, but with way more refinement and a steering and handling characteristic more similar to the Mazda 3. Plus back seat legroom, quite similar to a Camry. This is probably one of the best deals you can get right now. Compared to those cars as well, this gets a much longer warranty with a five-year warranty system. So don't discount the GAC brand if you're considering a nice, comfortable, little compact car for your daily drive. If you like this video, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more car reviews.